Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Scary. What police just found in Vegas shooter's car reveals he had much bigger plans. Stephen Craig Paddock. 64 years old. White male from Mesquite, Nevada. This is the description of the monster who killed 59 people and injured over 525 others. 59 dead and 525 plus wounded makes this Las Vegas shooting the deadliest in American history. Think about that. Paddock's father was once on the FBI's most wanted list for escaping prison. His brother, Eric, says Stephen was a retired multimillionaire. The Islamic State has taken credit for the shooting. Also, nearly two dozen rifles were found in Paddock's hotel room. Now, look what police have just discovered in Paddock's car. From Daily Caller Clark County Sheriff Joseph Lombardo told reporters Monday that ammonium nitrate, a chemical compound used to make homemade bombs was found in the Las Vegas shooter's car. What is ammonium nitrate exactly? Here you go. Ammonium nitrate is a high nitrogen fertilizer and was also found in the well-known Oklahoma City bombing in April of 1995 when a truck bomb explosion blew up the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, leaving 168 people deceased and hundreds injured. Stay tuned for further updates. This story isn't over just yet. We still have to learn what his plans were with these materials. Also, what was Paddock's motive? Why did he plot and plan the way he did? HT Gateway Pundit Powerful Agnostic Vegas shooting survivor explains why he's now a firm believer in God. Catastrophic events often change lives forever, for better or for worse. The Las Vegas shooting massacre saw Stephen Paddock slaughter 59 innocent civilians and injure more than 500 others, making the attack the deadliest mass shooting in American history. Yet, for a young man named Taylor Bench what happened was a godsend. Literally. Bench went into the country music festival in agnostic. He left a firm believer in God. The Daily Ryer has a scoop. I was agnostic going into the concert and I'm a firm believer in God now, said Benj on Monday morning. Because there's no way that all of that happened and that I made it and I was blessed enough to still be here live talking to you today. He added, my sister and I, we started running to the left and every time they shot, we took cover. My sister, being as noble as she, she actually threw herself on top of me and was saying, I love you Taylor, I love you. Pretty amazing, isn't it? At least one good thing came from this horrific shooting. Binge is now on the path to heaven, and Paddock is rotting in hell. What a story. By far the best you'll see today. Let's get 50,000 shares for Taylor Binge to let him know we've got his back. Report where Vegas killer sent thousands of dollars before opening fire is turning serious heads. We've learned a bunch about the Las Vegas massacre at this point, the deadliest mass shooting in United States history. For example, 64-year-old Stephen Paddock's father was once on the FBI's most wanted list for escaping prison. His brother, Eric, says Stephen was a retired multimillionaire. Also, the Islamic State has taken credit for the shooting. Now, get ready for a doozy. Apparently, Paddock sent tens of thousands of dollars to the Philippines in recent months. Why? Paddock's girlfriend is apparently a Filipino descent. Here's a new picture just released of both Stephen and Mary Lou Danley. Pretty weird, wouldn't you say? Stay tuned for more information as it becomes available. Spread this story like wildfire all over Facebook to expose this monster. HT Gateway Pundit
Kansas City Chiefs just did the worst thing possible during the national anthem last night. This week we finally saw NFL players begin to stand up once again to show respect for our national anthem. Many teams made a point to have nobody kneel during the anthem and even announce their intentions. Of course, ESPN did everything they could to hide the teams or cut the coverage during the anthem anyways to not cause problems. Then the horrible Vegas shooting happened. After that, ESPN decided they would go ahead and air the national anthem during Monday Night Football to show unity with the country. It seemed like a good enough plan until the Kansas City Chiefs went and ruined everything. The team showed up to the game, came out for the national anthem, then some of the star players SAT for the song. Not kneeled, just sat on their butts. So disrespectful. The sitters on the team were Chiefs cornerback Marcus Peters and linebacker Yuk Melig. What they did was beyond disrespectful and should not be easily forgiven. It is worth noting that linebacker Justin Houston knelt in a personal prayer for the fallen which is completely acceptable during situations like a horrible attack. If you haven't yet, the people of Vegas could desperately use prayers from many more people. Still, the Kansas City Chiefs disgrace themselves letting those two players sit during such a significant occasion while the Washington Redskins across the way stood proudly for the whole anthem. Let's get this out everywhere and show the Chiefs what we NFL fans do when they disrespect the flag. Whoops Obama's millionaire friend Richard Branson just let slip a secret Obama never wanted getting out. We all know Obama was super left. But now that he's out of office, his friends are finally speaking out and we can really begin to separate the former president's true feelings from his politics. Case in point billionaire Richard Branson recently released an autobiography Finding My Virginity detailing his friendship with Obama, and exposed something the public never knew. Obama was adamantly anti-death penalty for any reason. Branson writes in his book about a lunch meeting he had with Obama in 2016, as reported in the Daily Mail. Would you consider using presidential decree to remove the death penalty for the 60 people under federal jurisdiction on death row? I asked. Or at least five of the 60 that, attorney and activist, Brian, Stevenson, feels have particularly strong evidence for pardoning? Branson continued. He said that he was more inclined to pardon all 60 than make a judgment on five. He felt that was the morally correct path, since he disagreed with the death penalty on principle. Now compare this to what he told the American public in 2015 during an interview with CNN. There are certain crimes that are so beyond the pale that I understand society's need to express its outrage so I have not traditionally been opposed to the death penalty in theory. But in practice it's deeply troubling. A typical non-answer from Obama, but he clearly comes across as not opposed to the death penalty. At least now we know how he really felt, according to Richard Branson, and we just got one more example of how he deceived the American people. Share this one out to expose Obama, and share it again if you love having a president who actually says what he means. H.C. Daily Mail Right after Las Vegas attack atheist Richard Dawkins did something so sick even his supporters are disgusted. In yet another example of tone-deaf leftists trying to make their point in the most disturbing and insensitive way possible. British evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins just said something truly sick about the Las Vegas attack. Wow! This might be one of the most disturbing things I've ever heard a leftist say. There are so many things wrong with this post it's hard to even know where to be. A total lack of respect for the victims by mocking out southern accents? A total mischaracterization of the Second Amendment? Saying the attacker had great shooting? It's so messed up on so many levels. Dawkins has yet to issue an apology for his deplorable comments. Perhaps he never will. But we the people are going to show that we are better than him by saying no to this hatred and praying for the victims and their families. Share it out if you agree. H.T. Washington Times